This video is going to be about series and parallel arrangements of resistors and equivalent resistance, which together are kind of the centerpiece of this unit. They're probably the single most important idea. Both series and parallel are names for paths that current can take through resistors. Resistors are said to be in series if current that passes through one needs to pass through the other as well. So just remember from the last video that current is being pushed by other electrons, so it can't really move backwards. So what that means is that if this electron passes through this first resistor R1, there's no way it can turn back and go back through R1. To continue, it's also going to have to go through R2. So what that means is that if it goes through R1, it also has to pass through R2 as well. So we would say that R1 and R2 are in series. In comparison, resistors are said to be in parallel if current that passes through one cannot pass through the others. So resistors three and four are in parallel with each other, and I'll show you why. We can imagine an electron starting at one end and taking one path through this arrangement like this. So in this case, it passed through R3 and not through R4. We can also imagine it passing through R4 and not through R3. However, if we imagine it trying to go through both like this, it's going to hit a dead end over here. Because this isn't actually just one electron, there are other electrons following this path, it's going to hit a dead end, and so these electrons wouldn't actually be able to continue in this way because there are already electrons moving through another part of the circuit. So because of this, current that passes through R4 cannot pass through R3 and vice versa. So this is not possible, so we would say that R3 and R4 are in parallel with each other. There are important rules for current and voltage and resistance in series and parallel arrangements. Starting with current, in a series circuit, the current going through each resistor is equal to the total current, whereas in a parallel circuit, the sum of the current going through each resistor is equal to the total current. So if I were to draw a picture of what these currents are doing in the series circuit, it's just one current consistently moving through all of them, it's just one total current. Whereas in the parallel circuit, the total current is going to break up into two smaller currents that go through resistor 1 and resistor 2, and then come back together and form a total after. So the total current is going to be equal to the first current plus the second. This makes sense if we use the water analogy. I can see here that these two resistors in the water analogy are arranged in series on the left and parallel on the right. I can see in the series arrangement that the total current, the total amount of water, has to travel through both resistors. Whereas in the parallel circuit, the current has to split into two smaller currents, go through each resistor, and then come back together after. So that's why those two current rules work for series and parallel. The rule for voltage in series and parallel works like this. In series, the sum of the voltage drops across each resistor is equal to the total voltage drop in the circuit. So if this is the total voltage drop, if there's a total drop from R1 to R2, then that total is going to be equal to the sum of the voltage drop across R1 and the sum of the voltage drop across R2. In comparison, in a parallel circuit, the voltage in each resistor is equal to the total voltage. So if there's a total voltage drop here, that's going to be equal to voltage 1, and it's also equal to voltage 2. Again, we can explain this with the water analogy, because if we consider the voltage to be kind of like the height of the water, I can see that in the series circuit, the total height dropped on each resistor added together, H1 plus H2, is going to be equal to that total height. So the total potential lost in each resistor added together makes the total potential. Whereas in a parallel circuit, the total height gained will be equal to the total height dropped in each resistor. So the voltage is equal in a parallel circuit. I now need to define equivalent resistance, which is really just a fancy way of saying total resistance. Equivalent resistance is specifically talking about the resistance that multiple resistors provide. In other words, it means finding a single resistor that is equivalent to the multiple resistors in a circuit. In a series circuit, the equivalent resistance is equal to the sum of the individual resistors, or the sum of their individual resistances. That part's pretty simple. However, the parallel rule is pretty tricky. In a parallel circuit, the inverse of the equivalent or total resistance is equal to the sum of the inverse of the individual resistances. That equation looks like this on the right. I'm going to give you some examples of using those. I'm going to find the equivalent resistance for the following circuits. I can see number one is a series circuit, which means that I'm just going to add the resistances together like this. So I get a final resistance of eight ohms. So that means that these two resistors, so that means that if you put these two resistors into this shape in your circuit, it's basically the same as putting a single resistor in with a resistance of eight ohms. And I can see that in number two, those are also a series arrangement. So I'm just going to add them together to find their equivalent resistance and that's equal to 12 ohms. So these three resistors behave like a single 12 ohm resistor. 
I can see that in number three, these resistors are parallel to each other. So I'm going to need to use the rule for parallel resistances. I'm going to plug them in like this. And the first step of solving these problems after plugging them in is finding a common denominator. So I can see that that's going to be 10 ohms. So when I combine these, this is going to be three over 10 ohms is equal to one over the equivalent resistance. A very common mistake is for students to either stop here or to just add the denominators together. So this is definitely not two over 15. It's definitely not one over 15. It's three over 10 ohms is equal to one over the equivalent resistance. Taking the inverse of both sides, I get that the equivalent resistance by itself is equal to 10 ohms over 3, which is equal to 3.3 ohms. So those two resistors behave like a single resistor of 3.3 ohms of resistance. So a pattern you might have noticed is that in series, the total resistance is greater than the individual resistances, whereas in parallel, that total resistance is actually less than the individual resistances. So it actually becomes easier to go through resistances if you put them in parallel. In number four, I'm just going to plug those three into my equation, solve it out using some math, and when I solve that, I get an equivalent resistance of 1.7 ohms. So that would be the equivalent resistance in number four. A complex circuit is a circuit with a combination of series and parallel arrangements. To simplify a complex circuit, find arrangements inside of it that are simple series or parallel circuits, simplify them to a single resistor, and repeat until the entire circuit is one resistor. So this is a very complex circuit, but even this can be pretty easily broken down if we just step back from it and just focus on simple pairs of resistors or simple sets of resistors that are in simple series or parallel arrangements with each other and begin to break them down. As an example, I can see that these are in parallel with each other, so I can use the parallel rule to find their equivalent resistance. And when I do that, I find the equivalent resistance is three ohms. So these two behave like a single resistor of three ohms, like this. Now I can look for other simple arrangements. I can see that this is a simple series arrangement now. So I plug that into my series equation and I get five ohms as the equivalent resistance. So these two behave like a single resistor of five ohms. I'm going to do the same thing up here and say that this is nine ohms because this is another simple series arrangement. And now I can see that these two are in a simple parallel arrangement with each other. Plugging that into the parallel rule, I get 3.2 ohms of equivalent resistance. I rounded there a little bit. And finally, I can see that these two resistors are in a simple series arrangement with each other. So adding those together gets me 8.2 ohms. So I just simplified that circuit. All of those resistors together behave like an individual resistor of 8.2 ohms. So that one resistor is the equivalent resistance of that complex circuit. All those resistors working together behave just like an individual resistor of 8.2 ohms. So that's how you find the equivalent resistance using series and parallel. In the next few videos, we're gonna learn how to get more information out of that.